Hello, and welcome to Paul's SAT Reading Comprehension Guide. In this series of videos, we're going to teach you how to read the reading passages, think about them properly, and answer the questions properly. Uh, this can be very daunting. This can be a very uh, scary, confusing uh, test part uh, for people. Um, it can, some people are not confident in their reading skills. A lot of people find this to be one of the most difficult portions of the test. And strategy can be very hard to come by. However, we do have a very good strategy in this series of videos, ones that will be your best bet to improving your score from wherever it is now to wherever you want it to be. Uh, everybody has a different level of reading comprehension. No matter where you are, you are going to be on some level. If your reading comprehension level is high, more questions are going to be easy for you. If your reading comprehension level is low, you're going to have more and more difficulty. But it doesn't matter what your reading comprehension level is now, these tips and strategies will help you regardless of what your level is. If you are regularly scoring a 300, this will help you. If you are regularly, regularly scoring a 700, this will help you. The only way this is not going to help you is if you're scoring an 800 and you're not missing any questions. This will help you do better on the reading comprehension section of the test. So before we get into how to answer the questions and how to uh, read the passages, we're going to talk about how to manage your time. Now, for many people, this isn't an issue. But even if you don't have any difficulty answering the questions um, and you always finish every section completely when you take the SAT, you still want to watch this video because there is more than just um, getting done on time. There is also how to effectively manage the way that you think about things. Uh, and how to effectively answer the questions uh, in the time given. So uh, we'll talk first about time management in this video. Uh, we'll talk about how much time you should spend on each reading section, uh, how much time you should spend on each question, and how you should answer those questions once you get to them, as well as what you should do to deal with difficult questions. So first of all, um, and then finally, uh, we'll talk about the O and X system, which is exactly what it sounds like. You circle some and X others in order to organize yourself quickly. And we'll talk about that as well. So first things first. Some strategies recommend reading the question first and skipping over the passages. Uh, going directly to the questions and then going back to the passage. But this is proven time and time again to be a bad strategy. Any book or school or instructor or tutor who tells you that you can skip reading the passages is not doing their job correctly. You have to read the passage in order to understand it and answer the questions reliably. Um, if you don't read the passage, you can't make the connections that you're going to need to to be able to answer the questions effectively. The people who make the test know that you can just go right to the question. They make the questions to trick people who haven't done the necessary reading. The passages are selected because they reward reading the whole passage. And if you have difficulty fix finishing a whole passage, then there is strategy here in these videos for you. No matter, like I said, no matter what level you're at, if it's scary to think about reading the whole passage, that's okay. This, our, these videos will take that into consideration, so don't worry. Um, in, in fact, if you go straight to the questions, you're actually wasting time, turning the page back and forth, back and forth. Uh, this one says the line's 26 in here, and then you're constantly comparing information and making mistakes, and it's really faster to read the passage first. The best method to, is to read the passage first, make notes to yourself as you read it and on the important points, and then address the questions. Get a sense of the main idea, label the passage, go back to the questions, and then start. Uh, if you're a student with a reading score of less than 500 or regularly fail to finish all of the questions that are in a section, um, there's a slightly diff different strategy. Uh, where you do actually go to the questions first and then read the passage, um, but it's only slightly different than what we're doing here. You don't actually answer the questions first. We'll get to it later. Um, if, but first, we'll cover what's applicable to everybody. Uh, but for now, 
even if you are less than 500, especially when you're practicing, don't try it in this different way. If you, uh, for now, only read the passages and then go to the questions. Um, well, all passages are different lengths. So how much time should you spend reading a passage that's this long or a passage that's this long? What's the difference between reading a passage that's 25 lines and a passage that's uh, 105? Well, it's very, very simple. Rule of thumb. 25 lines equals one minute or less. That simple. Um, and for every question, you have one minute. If you want to effectively address your time, don't take longer than a minute to read 25 lines and don't take longer than a minute to answer one question. Now, some questions are going to take you less than a minute to answer, and some sets of 25 lines are going to take you less than a minute to read them. But on average, this is what you want to shoot for as a maximum amount of time. Now, if this is horrifyingly short for you right now, that's okay. This is the beginning. This is a goal to shoot for. If it's fast, just make it a target. Don't think that you have to get here immediately and that if you're slower than this, that you're so, no, 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 don't beat yourself up. It's a goal. If you can get here or even get close to here, you're gonna be on good terms. If you really hit this, if you really do get a minute or less and a question a minute, then you are perfectly using your time and you'll have lots of time over to correct mistakes you've made, think about uh, questions that are difficult and so on. This is ideal. Get a, get a feel for it though. Get out a stopwatch, time yourself as you go through. Hit 25, um, have a beeper set up to go off every 30 seconds so that you know what you're doing, especially if you are having trouble finishing each section of the test. You really need to get your time management under control if you're, having, if you're leaving answers on the page. So if you need, uh, following the 25 lines to a minute rule, uh, if you need more time, to read the passage, that's okay. If you need a minute and a half to read 25 lines, that's a little much, but if you need that, take that. That, that will mean you'll have less time at the end to review the questions that, you, that uh, you are having difficulty with. You're gonna have less time to address each question, but fortunately, with this, pat, with this system, you'll at least have gotten all the questions you were gonna get anyway. It'll just be lessening the amount of time that you have to deal with more difficult questions that you might have missed anyway. So it's a trade-off. Either you have more reading time or you have more time to address difficult questions. It's one or the other. So if you need to take a little extra time to read, that's good. It's better to understand than it is to address the really difficult questions because a lot of those questions you're not gonna get no matter what if you put an X on them. So. Um, but remember, that's a trade-off. Try to get to that one minute, 25 lines thing. That's really where you want to get. Um, this is attainable speed for almost anybody who regularly gets above a 500. It may seem a lot at first. If you got a 550, you think, oh my God, that's really fast. But if you practice it, if you get used to it, you'll find it's actually more comfortable than you think. The reason for setting these goals is because one of the biggest problems that students have who don't get it done who don't finish their sections, who uh, are regularly getting a, fr a score that's frustrating to them is because they don't have good test taking skills. It's not that they don't understand, it's that they can't quite organize their mind in a way that's effective. So the important thing is to find every single question on that test that you can answer. Like I mentioned at the beginning, everybody has a different reading comprehension level. If you have a high reading comprehension level, then you're going to be able to grab more questions. More questions are gonna be available to you as either easy or answerable. So we need to find for you, whatever your level is, we need to find all the questions that are easy or answerable for you. And a lot of times in those sections, the last two or three questions are easier on purpose to get students who don't have good time management skills. They know exactly that this is how students take tests. They're, you're not just being tested on your reading comprehension, you're being tested on your thought processes. So um, make sure that you look at and attempt to answer every question and that's what this time management system is for. So remember, if you can, find an answer for every question, right? And if you can't, make sure that you find an answer for every question that you have the ability to answer. This is the most important thing to remember. Recognize what you know. Recognize what you don't know. That is the key to comprehension. Part of comprehension is admitting, I don't understand this. I do not comprehend this. If you could admit to yourself, I don't know. <laughs> I don't get this. I don't understand. If you could admit that, then that's comprehension. 
And if you admit that I don't understand this sentence, then you can skip it and you can work around that sentence. If it's that sentence in this passage is extremely important, then you'll know, well, I need to figure out what that sentence is saying, even though I don't know all the vocabulary words in it. The better you get at that, the better your score is going to be. Even if you struggle with vocabulary and you struggle with grammar, no matter what, if you can understand what you don't understand, then you're going to do better. So in order to accomplish this goal, you want to survey all the questions first. Um, what, what you'll do is read the passage, taking the one minute for 25 lines. So if it's a 100, minute question, a 100 line question, then it's going to take you, it should take you four minutes out of the 25. And then take 30 seconds per question maximum to look at it. All right, we're going to go through a practice session of this, but go through 30 seconds per question the first time through all the questions, right? And if you can answer it, answer it, right? The, the, through that first 30 second run, if you can answer the question in 30 seconds, if it's an easy question, go ahead and answer it, right? If you're confident with your answer, if you're pretty sure, yeah, I got that one right, I know that's right, mark it with a circle, right? If you're not sure if you got it right or not, mark it with an X, okay? If you can't find the answer and you're still thinking about it within 30 seconds, mark it with an X and come back. Now this doesn't mean that we're not coming back to it. This means we are coming back to it later, okay? We're not leaving it behind, we're saving it for later. This is, I know a lot of students struggle with skipping a question, but that's the point. We wanna to get to those questions that you can answer. You have to get to the questions that you can answer. If you spend 30 seconds and you can't come up with an answer, then we'll come back later. That's why we have half of our time thinking about it and then the rest of the time coming back. So once you have made, you've put an O or an X on every single question in the section, then you go back to the beginning and do the X's one at a time. Now you don't do them in order, you go back to the ones that you are, have the best chance of answering. Uh, and again, we'll talk about this a little bit here. Um, this way, none of the answers that you can answer are left behind. And this is immediately, if you do this and you don't leave any questions behind, this is immediately going to raise your score um, by who knows how much. But if you stop leaving questions unaddressed, your score will immediately increase by an untold number of points. Because there are often questions that you leave behind because you ran out of time that you could have answered. And this takes care of that right away. Um, now, the 30 second rule is adjustable. If you're going 30 seconds for one, 30 seconds for number two, and you get to number three and you're like, oh, well, I, I just need a little bit more time. That's all I need. I just need a little bit more time and I could answer that, but 30 seconds, oh, who cares? Take 35 seconds, take 40 seconds. If you have a train of thought going and you're almost there, take 40 seconds, right? But the most important part of this is knowing what you know and what you don't know, knowing when you're stuck. When you read that thing and you're taking 30 seconds and you still have three question choices left and you know you're gonna to have to bounce back and forth between the passage and the question and the passage and the question and you have to do process of elimination and it's gonna take you more than 30 seconds, then just, oh, this is gonna take me a lot of time. I'm gonna X this and come back. Now we'll show some examples here. Um, let's take a look at one example. In line four, it says, the word flush most nearly means what? And our options are red, wealthy, frustrated, full, and washed out. Now, before we go back to the passage, um, we don't know because flush means all of these things. And in a different video, we'll talk about how to answer these kinds of questions effectively. Uh, but for now, this is just an example of any kind of question whatsoever. So the word flush most nearly means. We go back to the passage, in the passage on line four, the sentence in, in uh, question says, his cheeks were flush like cherries with excitement, okay? Now, this is not a difficult question, or hopefully not a difficult question. Uh, flush, cherries are red, well we've got red as a choice, his cheeks were red like cherries, makes sense. We're very confident that the question, the correct answer is A. So under 30 seconds and possibly under 10 seconds, you've answered this question, just boom, red, easy. Circle it and move on. You never have to look at it again. And those 20 seconds that you didn't spend here go towards another harder question, all right? It just spreads out after you've already looked at all the other ones. Now, another question is more difficult, right? 
Um, for example, the author's discussion of a terrible dinner in line 15 is either explains his opinion, reveals his confusion, introduces a new character, explores an interesting digression, or finalizes a, a line of reasoning. Now, this is harder, right? You have to go back to the passage. Now, we're not going to look exactly at the passage, but this is, again, just an example. You have to go back to line 15. You have to think about this uh, discussion of a terrible dinner. You got to think about what it's doing. You got to think, is he explaining something, revealing, introducing? Uh, what is he doing? It's going to take you longer than 30 seconds. But you go ahead, you use that full 30 seconds. You're like, I understand this. I see what's going on. But you know you're going to have to do process of elimination. You're going to have to check all of these things, right? So you, you spend the 30 seconds and you, re you remove A. You know he didn't explain his opinion. You know he didn't introduce a new character. Um, you think maybe he's revealing his confusion. You think maybe he's exploring an interesting digression. And, and uh, you can't quite figure out E. But in your mind, you've got a mental clock that says, oh, I've spent too long on this. I need to move on. I'll come back, right? And then you remove E. And you're like, ah, oh, fine. All right. I can do this one. This will be the first one I come back to. Uh, so you circle a, ch a preliminary choice. You say, I I'm pretty sure it's D. I'm going to move on and come back and verify. So you X that one and say, I need to think about this for a little bit longer. You've made your choice. You didn't waste any of your time, but you're, you've saved this one for later. Right? And uh, you do this one first when you come back the next time. Now, the third type of question, you have a really hard time understanding. You're not even sure what it's asking. Some in line 45 would feel what way about the author's dog? Uh, happy, happier, sad but happy, happy but sad, the dog is a trick. This is hard. Okay, this is not a real question. This is just an example of something that might be extremely confusing. This is really hard. Oh, happy, happier? What? I, don't, I just don't understand what is going on. So you, this is a really good skill to pick up. You see a question and the first 30 seconds through, you're like, dear God, this is impossible. To recognize questions, especially recognize questions that you know you are never going to be able to answer. Now, it might be hard to admit, but there are questions, depending on your level, that you are literally going to be unable to answer. You go back to line 45, you look at it and you're like, oh, geez, I don't need, this was the whole paragraph that I could not understand, right? I know that I don't understand this. And I don't even, there's a dog in that paragraph? I didn't even see a dog in that paragraph. I don't even understand. So you immediately X that question. You spend no time in that first 30 seconds trying to crack it. You just go, you understand, I don't get this. If I have time, I'm going to try to break this. But only if I've answered all my other Xs. Only if I've answered all the questions I'm fairly confident about, am I going to come back and even try this one? Because you don't want to waste your time. Sitting here on this question, trying to crack it, if this is the fourth question, you've wasted a who knows how much time, right? Because you don't know how much time is left. You, you, it, this is why people run out of time on, on their tests, is they get stuck trying to answer every question even if they can't answer it. So make sure you're confident enough in your ability to say, I don't get it, and come back later. All right. So let's go back to the question that we were confident about. The author's discussion of a terrible dinner, where we come back, we're pretty sure about D. Um, you take your time, you go through all the other, you marked O and X, you've gotten to the end of the section, and you go back, okay, I've got all my circles, now it's time to go back and do my X's, right? You go to the X's, and you remember that you came to this one, you're like, ah, okay, I'm pretty sure about this one. You go back, you take 10 more seconds, 20 more seconds, you go back to the passage, yep, for sure, it's definitely D, you double check it, and you're 100% confident, so you circle it. Now, on the test, this is entirely unnecessary. You're gonna say, why did I change it? This is entirely unnecessary on the actual test, but when you're practicing, when you're taking practice tests, you really wanna keep track of how many circle questions you have and how many X questions you have. Now, you can, you can circle, uh, you can X a question and answer it, on the sheet and leave it an X if you're not sure. Any questions that you're not sure about, even if you answer them, you should leave an X. The import, what you're trying to do is get 100% of your circle questions right and 100% of your X questions wrong. Now you can answer an X question. You can leave it X and write down D and you got B. Okay, that's right. 
you didn't know. You knew that you didn't know, right? The purpose of marking the questions like that is to make sure that you're aware of what you know and what you don't know, right? If 100% of your X questions are zero or O, if 100% of your O questions are correct, good. 100% of your X questions wrong, good. If you're getting a lot of O questions wrong, then you need to slow down. You need to be aware that you're not answering the questions to the level that you think you are. Something is going wrong and you need to chill out. You need to rest. Because you thought you were right, but you were wrong, right? And the same thing goes for the X's. If you get a lot of X questions right, that means you're, you should be more confident. You can maybe speed up a little bit, have a little more faith in yourself, take a little more time on other kinds of questions, right? That, that means the ones that you think you're getting wrong, you're actually getting right, so have a little more faith. The important thing is 100% O, 100% X. Now you can get one wrong, one right, it, it's okay. It's not gonna be a, a pure science, but the, it should be as close to 100% as you possibly can. So most important thing to remember about answering questions. Always read the question first and then return to the passage to come up with your own answer before you read the answer choices. I've said it in every other video that I've done. The most important thing you can do is come up with your own answer first. I'm going to repeat it a lot of times in these videos and if you know it, if you understand it, that's fine, but it's so important I'm just gonna not stop talking about it. If you read the answers first, if you get to that question and you read, the author said something about a terrible dinner and you read A, B, C, D, and E, and you read each of the choices before you go back to the passage, A, that's a waste of time. You don't know anything yet. You haven't come up, what is reading the answer choices going to do for you other than pre-influence your decision, right? Your mind subconsciously knows that one of those choices is correct. And even though you haven't done any reasoning whatsoever, your brain thinks it knows. Your brain thinks it's solving the problem. And sometimes it's gonna be right, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you're gonna know the answer without even going back to the passage. But then other times you're like, well, D sounds pretty good. I think I think D was pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think it's D. I'm gonna go back to the passage and I'm gonna check, but I'm pretty sure it's D and it's definitely not D. But your brain knows, your brain thought, well, but I said D, well, why not D? Maybe it is D. And so you make up an excuse for yourself. Like, but I thought D, D sounds so pretty good. I thought D was pretty good. And you're full of it. But your, your confidence, your ego is overriding your logic. If you pick the answer choices first, you will waste your time. You will convince yourself that you are right when you're wrong or vice versa. So don't read the answer choices first. That's what I always say. I say they are dessert. You have to eat your meal of thinking and reasoning before you look at the answer choices. Now again, don't get me wrong, Sometimes you're going to have to read the answer choices because you don't even know what the question's talking about. You go back to the passage, you read it, and then, okay, I don't get it. And then you have to read the answer choices. That's usually a process of elimination question when you really can't come up with your own answer from the text. But for the most part, you really want to come up with your own answer before you read the answer choices. Number one rule, if you can get good at that, that's going to increase your score. We'll talk more about that a little later. So in summary, to most effectively... Use your time. 25 lines of the text is equals one minute of reading. And for each question, read it, go back to the text, find the information you need, come up with your own answer to the question, then read your answer choices. In fact, if you do that, you'll usually spend a lot less time making your decision if you do that too. 30 seconds per question the first time, marking each question in O or an X, then returning to the X questions and getting them right and spending your time effectively amongst the questions that you haven't yet answered. That's it. This is strategy right here. The rest of it is reading properly, which we'll talk about in the next set of videos. So first, pause the video, stop for a moment. I just recapped it, so you maybe shouldn't need to stop the video, but if you need to think about it, how much time should you spend on reading? Pause the video and give the answer. Well, you need to spend 25 lines uh, for each 25 lines, you need to spend a minute or less. Uh, how, much, whoa, how much time should you spend on each question? You should have less than a minute on each question. 
how should you answer the questions? This is the important thing, like I said, I'm gonna harp on it. Which, how should you answer the questions? You need to spend 30 seconds or less the first time and then return to the difficult questions. And how should you deal with difficult questions? Should mark them with a big fat X and return if you have the time. If you know you got it wrong, admit it and move on. It's dealing with, deal with the grief and move on. And why should you use the O's and the X's? Well, you need to be able to gauge your own comprehension. Like I said, be more confident if you're getting all your O's right. Um, if you're getting a lot of your X's right, be more confident. If you're missing O's and you're missing X's, then you need to slow down and chill out because you're not as smart as you think you are, okay? So take it easy if a lot of O's are wrong. That's very important. Now, from this point, if you have a score above 500, go ahead and move on to the next video. If your average score is over 500, don't worry about it. Um, move on to the next video. However, if you're scoring below 500, then you need to watch this next part because the strategy is slightly different with the O's and the X's. So if you're below 500, keep watching right now. Um, then we need to adjust slightly, okay? So just stick around for another minute or two. If your reading comprehension score is very low, uh, then even if you, if you try to read the whole passage, then even doing the 30 seconds per question might be a little bit too much time. If you're under 500, you're, spent, you're gonna be taking a lot more time than people over 500 to answer the question. So we need to make sure you can get all the ones that you possibly can. Um, and in, even if you use the system, if it just takes too much time. So in this case, then you look at the questions first and make a little map in the passage. And then you read the passage and go back to the questions that you can answer. And we'll talk about that here. So when you see a new passage, don't read it first. Go directly to the questions. You're not answering them first. But what you are going to do is find any questions that have a line reference number, like in line four, in the third paragraph, in uh, lines 43 through 44. Mark them. Draw a little line. If it says lines 56 through 75, draw a little arc that marks it out. And then write the uh, question number that deals with that part of the passage right next to it. Okay, so if it says line four, if question one says in line four, whatever, go to line four and write question one. If it says lines seven through 15, go to line seven through 15, draw a little arc and write question two and so on. Not every question has a line number, but that's okay. Just any ones that do. And then uh, go back. It, th this shouldn't take too long. It should be boom, boom, like, oh, four, number two, number seven, lines 43 through 44. It shouldn't take you very long to do this. This is a quick uh, application of time. Now go back and read the whole passage. Once you've uh, marked the passage for where the questions are related, go back to the passage, right? And when you come to a question number in the passage, stop there and go to that question and try to answer it right away. This will be a better use of your time. Um, and once you've finished reading the passage, then go to any questions that don't have line numbers. This will, um, and still try to get to every single question that you can, but this will make it so that uh, at the moment that you're reading it, you still have that information fresh in your mind. This works well. Once you um, have over 500 regularly, then don't do that anymore. Once you're getting over 500, then read it from the beginning and then go to the questions, right? You should really uh, start using the other method as soon as possible because it's almost just an emergency to use it that way. So, but during the whole thing, you should still use O's and X's, right? Uh, once you finish reading the passage, still do the O's X thing. Um, and even when you go back to the question, don't spend longer than 30 seconds going back there. Think of it as your part of your O and X time during the time you're reading the quest, reading the passage. So finally, on the next video, we're going to talk about reading properly, how to read and maintain your comprehension as best as you can. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.